In this short video, I want to highlight and just introduce one way of looking at stock market volatility. It's called the VIX. It's certainly not the only way of looking at volatility, but it does, for some people, offer a snapshot into how worried a certain part of the equity market is. And some people that can translate into a sort of fear gauge as to what might happen next. So, why are we trying to measure and capture volatility in one number? And this isn't the only measure that tries to do so. Well, for most people, the biggest risk of buying shares is what's called price risk, the fact they can go down as well as up. There are other risks and the VIX doesn't deal with them. So liquidity risk is the risk you can't sell or can't sell at the price you want, the right time that you want, and default risk, the risk of the issuer going bust. But we're not gonna worry about those here. This is purely focused on price risk nervousness, if you like. Now, you can capture that in one number, and this one's known as the VIX, also known by its nickname, the market's fear gauge. So what is it? Basically, the Chicago Board of Trade came up with this back in the early 1990s. There are one or two other versions around, and I'll flag one of those in the last slide. But essentially, this is a certain part of the market, options traders, looking at the S&P 500. That's one of America's biggest indices, certainly the, one of the broadest, and America, after all, is the biggest stock market in the world, and asking themselves, how nervous are we? Now, to cut to the technical chase on this, I'm gonna miss out a raft of technical detail because most people just want to have some understanding of the number at the end of the day. What those people are doing is, in the options market, people are basically writing contracts, which are a little bit, a little bit like insurance contracts. Now, when you buy car insurance, the premium that you pay will depend heavily on how nervous the insurer is about the risk of you crashing the car. Low risk people pay less than high risk people. Well, if you wanna see it that way, and it is a slight um, sleight of hand I've used, options premiums on share indices work a similar way. The more nervous the market is that an index could jump or dive, basically the larger the option premium that is charged on people who want to kind of insure themselves against a market move. All right, so option premiums can give you quite a lot of information about how nervous people are about what could happen in the stock market next. As a very rough rule of thumb, high premiums tend to suggest lots of nervousness, low premiums tend to suggest much less nervousness. Now imagine you could take all of that data across quite a few different contracts and combine it to one number, essentially one fear gauge, and that's what the VIX is all about, that gives you a snapshot, a fairly crude one, but a snapshot of how worried the market is right now, or that particular part of the market. Well, that's what the VIX is all about. So it is condensing volatility, nervousness into a single number. Right. Now, cut out a lot of technical detail there, but most people want to get to what does this number mean? Well, you can find it in various places on the CBOE com website for example it's also published elsewhere you'll find it pops up every now and again in commentary market reports and so on so what does it mean well it comes in a range all right it's a single number the lower it is the more complacent or or uh, less worried the market is the higher it is the more anxiety and fear there is so so how do you benchmark it if you like well somewhere between about 12 and 20 is considered normal how do they know that that's just historically since 1993 if you like it's kind of an average Low volatility, anywhere below about 12. This isn't an exact science, clearly. High volatility, anything above about 30. All right? And it's more about you know, the movement and the direction of the VIX than the absolute number when you're sort of looking at, hmm, is the market getting more nervous? Is it getting less nervous? And over what sort of period can I make that judgment? How high could it go? Well, in theory, it could go to anywhere, and it has been above 80 at the peak of the kind of financial crisis as the next slide shows. So a quick snapshot all right, of the VIX, that's the index I just mentioned, against the index of the S&P 500 leading stocks. So you'll notice a pattern here. All right? Basically, if I superimpose the VIX over the S&P 500, um, there's that spike I mentioned up to around the 80 level. And you'll notice a pattern, which is that the VIX and the S&P are kind of moving in opposite directions. So you can see that happening you know, there, you can see it happening in there, you can see it happening there, and you can see that this gap has sort of widened out, all right, as the stock market has crept up, 
So fear levels are sort of drifted down, all right? And that is, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, all right? The VIX doesn't move exactly in proportion with the stock market, but you can see from that that the fact it tends to move in the opposite direction gives you an indication that it can be useful for getting a snapshot on what could happen next. Because it's basically saying, you know, as the VIX tends to drop away, the stock market's tended to rise, and the opposite is true. Now, to summarize that then, can provide a quick snapshot of stock market fear, that's when it spikes up, or confidence, or some would say when it's been low and stayed low for a while, even sort of complacency amongst investors. Remember, that translates as the price paid for that insurance on the stock market being relatively low. Why would that be? Because people don't feel they have to charge any more for it. All right, so that's the sort of confidence or complacency angle. A sharp rise in the VIX tends to be uh, mirrored by sharp volatility in the stock market. All right, now there is a UK alternative. The S&P 500 is the biggest stock market in the world, but for those people who want to track a similar measure associated with the FTSE, um, you can Google if you want to the FTSE and you'll see some data on that one, all right? Now, is the VIX a perfect measure? Can you sort of wake up one day and say, oh, the VIX has jumped, all right, from say 10 to 15, that presages some sort of stock market crash, or it's dropped from, you know, 30 to 20, that guarantees the market will go up, well, no. All right, the VIX is, at the end of the day, quite a short-term measure. It's based on what's happening in the options market, all right? It is, to some extent, reactive rather than proactive. All right. Some people would say it sort of mirrors the movement of the stock market, but it's not a great predictor for the long-term direction of the stock market. All right. So the safest way to view it is as a useful snapshot on fear levels in the market. All right. Combine it with other measures that I look at in other videos to get your overview on where the market might be right now in terms of fear levels. But like any indicator, like any single number, it's dangerous to rely solely on the VIX as your guide where the stock market's going next. It's useful for sure, but in future videos, I'll cover why it's not entirely foolproof.